Trantor. But what are the chances of that happening? such a great fucking intro i bet you guys have no idea what this is about if you well i mean i'm sure you read the title anyways welcome to satanists on cinema we're your hosts satanist cameron john and reverend campbell satanists on cinema is a film review and commentary series that takes all of our god damn it laughing already starts anyways takes all of our satanic film dvds lines them up on a log fires a birdshot at him nine times because you know satan whatever is left standing is our top five favorites if there's fewer than five then we toss in a few from the bargain bin yeah what have you a better way to make a list yeah whatever yeah i can't think of a better way no especially when when you're thinking of satanic films are you going for overtly satanic or are you going satanic elements or are you going deeper meaning stuff philosophies are you going with environments i mean there's so much to consider it was a fucking struggle yeah it really is and then i i reached out to all the uh the youtubes people <laughs> and uh, i got a whole bunch of people listing stuff that is uh, not as obvious as what i listed <laughs> yeah i i, I feel like obvious. if we would have had like a month to figure this out mm -hmm. We well, I mean, we probably still would have had matching ones, but <laughs> yeah, we got a still, couple that we, match up. We might not have, and it might not be over because uh, my biggest thing was I didn't want to go straight horror because mm -hmm. that's just too fucking obvious. Yeah, it's lazy. And then I went pretty much straight horror because <laughs> we're lazy. <laughs> we're lazy. <laughs> Mine is too, and it was it. It is a struggle because when you think of Satanism part of the reason why i love it or its aesthetics and so i'm immediately connected i'm like the omen nah <laughs> you know all like exorcist nah <laughs> like i'm i'm all i'm doing is gravitating is is nightmare on elm street satanic no not really uh, Fuck. yeah <laughs> duh in every fucking way especially dream warriors i mean they got a Dawkins mm. song that's true dream I mean, warriors what's is more satanic film. than that very special film um but we do have We've whittled it down to five each. We have a couple crossovers, but that, I think, is inevitable. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Um, I think we're probably going to start from our bottom and go to our top. Mm -hmm. um, not gay slang people. And so let's give a quick shout out to the people joining us in chat and slamming doors behind me. <laughs> uh, Bastards, you guys are in the chat. You're not supposed to slam doors. Yeah. Fuck. Or how do you get in the chat and then get behind me to slam a door? That's weird. Um, John, thanks Seriously. for joining us, man. Behemoth rules. I'm doing good. My day is doing good. It's good. Is that convincing? Uh, that dog, really what's up? <laughs> thanks for joining us. Leo! Um, Osmodeus, how you doing, man? Aaron, how are you, my dear? Uh, we are going to Ashworth. What up? We're going to be talking about some satanic films. We're not just going to name the film. We're going to show you a poster of it, too. Fuck this yeah, we is, are. Uh, you know, we, we prepped for this stuff. Uh, oh, we but we're going to be talking about the film, what, what makes it satanic. I mean, that's really what this entire show came out of, was the mm -hmm. Satanists on Satanic Cinema series that I put out. And so it's evolved in a lot of different ways. We have some experience with bullshitting, and we're going to try to throw a little bullshit at you. Whether you duck or not is on you. I mean, that's really yeah. up to you. Just, uh, just keep in mind it is like a GG concert. Nowhere is safe. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I still got to make you watch Hated. Yeah, I'm going to have to. All right, well, let's let's start and see if I hate your fifth number five. You want to start lead us off here? What's number five? Let's start with Taurus Trap, which right, I don't care that it's lazy and it's on the fucking film list. I actually completely forgot it was on the film Is list. Is it? I've never seen it's, this. It's on the film list, and right. I watch this shit all the fucking time. All right. Like, I, yeah, I didn't. I honestly completely spaced that it was on the film list. It's just so much fun. Like, uh, I mean, it starts off, you know, they're going on whatever vacation. I, it was like Memorial Day or Labor Day, some shit. I don't know. It's a weird time. Have you watched this all the time? <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm always drunk and it's like three in the morning. Man, this shit's like on Shudder on repeat, like when you watch Shudder TV. So, yeah, yeah I watch it all the time. Okay. Um, okay. But the, the 
the over reason why it's satanic and I guarantee why it's on the list is once you get into the heart of the film and the horror aspect, the um, antagonist straight up built his own habitat. He's got creatures that he, you know, uh, moves with telekinesis and they talk to him through telekinesis. This is like a total Place. environment. Absolutely. This is like, Total environment to a T. He's out huh. in the woods. It's got a couple different places and buildings. It's fun as hell. All right. Yeah. All right. I've never seen it. Uh, a couple notes on it. It was directed by David Sch Schmoller. Yep. Schmoller. 1979 was released. A budget of $800,000. And I have no idea what it made. Uh, it got yeah. a 6.2 on IMDb. 40% rotten. And 47% audience score, which ain't good. On Rotten Tomatoes, it stars Chuck Connors, Jocelyn Jones, John Van Ness, Robin Sherwood, Tanya Roberts, Don Jeffrey, and Keith McDermott, amongst others. I've got to see it now. I think it's it, seriously. It's always on Shutter, like the thing on is, The mask looks familiar. I'm sure. Well, you've watched the Joe Bob series, right? Yeah. Did you watch the first like Joe Bob comeback? Because if I remember correctly, this is know. one of the openers. I don't know. If not the opener, maybe I have seen it. It's it's, <laughs> it's honestly it's, it's one that a lot of people have seen, but they don't quite realize they've seen it right. because it's something that used to be on cable all the time, and it's just it's sort of like there to take up space. It's like comfort food. Yeah. All right. If comfort food captured, tortured, and murdered people. Yeah. Well, I mean. It's comfort food. I mean, that's what happens every time I have my mom's lasagna, but let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking A. Yeah, and it's, it, it was funny doing research for this because, like, it's something, like I said, I've seen a bunch. Mm -hmm. But I didn't realize that the whole telekinesis part wasn't actually a part of the uh, original screenplay. Oh, like, really? that was just something that Charles Band, who ended up becoming the producer of the film, was just like, yeah, you should probably throw that in there. Why? I don't fucking know. I'm Charles Band. Just do it. Because that's why <laughs> I got a castle. Do you have a castle? No. <laughs> Fucking tell then you don't get a choice. <laughs> it's all castles here. Um, you know, there it's 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 tough because when quantifying a satanic film, um, I mean, we we talked about the selection process is challenging, mm -hmm. but do we gravitate to horror because it just plays on that? mythology of demons and devils or religion as the mythology or do we gravitate toward that direction because it's evil and spooky and that's kind of what got us it you know picking up the satanic bible in the first place i mean there's there's a lot of overlaps with metal bands you know mm. with their graphic imagery and death and you know claiming to be satanic i mean they're sort of interchanged horror metal satanism even though you could strip away all of those things and Satanism would still be unto itself, you know, in, in a reality of its own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I, it's, uh, that's honestly, that's kind of what I think. It's just right. so inherent as Satanists to be drawn towards the you know, macabre and shit like that. And that's, yeah, that's the thing. Like I, like I said, I was really, I really wanted to avoid doing horror and sci-fi, but man, I've got like, I like four or five thousand movies that I would have had to yeah. like thumb through and then remember each single one. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't happening. Well, the thing is, I, I went online because I'm, I'm this type of an idiot saying, I wonder what other people think. Top mm -hmm. satanic films, horror, 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 horror. Mm -hmm. None of them are satanic. I was just like, no. ah, shit. Okay, not. so that's not going to help. Um, I guess I'm just going to have to just think about what I enjoy. Mm -hmm. And the ones that I chose are, I mean, almost all of them, not all of them, but a lot of them are on, if not most of them are on the satanic film list. And then I was like, ah, fuck, now I'm just cheating. But I'm not because I genuinely love these films and I feel that they are genuinely yeah. satanic. Well, I mean, they're being a... on the list in the first place. Exactly. There's a reason why they're on the list. Yeah. So, all right, let's do my fifth. Uh, since we just did your fifth. I feel like we're swapping girlfriends. <laughs> what do you think of her? Oh, uh, just wait till you take the mask off. It's yep. not her. <laughs> uh, everyone has a hole. All right, so <laughs> this is Immortal Beloved. A lot of people did not like this film because it did not portray Beethoven's life accurately. It's because I, they're idiots. 
I love this film. I will forever watch this film, and I will openly cry while finishing this film. I love it. I love Duh. the music. I love the the Victorian era that it's portraying. Um, I love the characters. I love the love story about it, mm -hmm. and everything from the music to the atmosphere to the characters themselves. I cannot see anything more satanic. And I just absolutely adore it. Um, so this is Immortal Beloved. It was directed by Bernard Rose, released in 1994, had a $500,000 budget, and its box office brought in $9.9 .9 million. Not too shabby. It has nope. a 7.5 out of 10 on IMDb, 55% rotten. Thank you, critics, from Rotten Tomatoes. But the audience loved it at 87%. So that goes to tell you, critics, the audience, do not always agree. <laughs> yeah, they're idiots. We're polar opposites here. First of all, uh, hey, thanks for joining us, uh, Leo, uh, as part of the Ninth Circle. Uh, how's it going, everyone? Uh, this has been jumping in the chat since we first did introductions. We appreciate you guys. And share your satanic films, what you like. And if you disagree with us on some of ours, let us know. Let us know why, and we will fight. We will fisticuffs. Well, I was going to say, if you disagree with my first one, I will fucking come to your house and punch Jeez. you in your face. Jeez. Period. He's, he's serious, too. And he's on his period. Um, I am. <laughs> I synced up with my wife. It's awful. I should have been stuck home for a month. I'm telling you, it happens. You can't control it. Um, <laughs> it stars Gary Oldman. And this is Gary Oldman's one of his greatest roles. Mm -hmm. he, first of all, he's just an amazing actor. So whatever role he's in, he's great. But this is one of them where you're just like, oh, come on. This is, this is brilliant. Um, Jerome Crabe and Isabella Rossellini. I love this film. It is satanic because I said it was, <laughs> and that's all I need. Uh, that's damn straight. <laughs> and it's Bernard Rose. Like, I mean, this is what he, this is his follow-up to Candyman, for fuck's sake. I mean, of all great films to follow. I mean, that's a great one. I love, love me some Candyman. I can't believe we haven't done Candyman, knowing that the new one's coming. We've even talked about well, it. Well, it's because we were going to, I thought oh, we, yeah, were gonna we were going to do a commentary. Or, I mean, fuck, we can do it right now. I, I will late <laughs> all the right, fuck We're changing the name course. of the show. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, all right, so that's my number five. It's a tough spot, number five, because we have so many honorable mentions that we want to address as well that mm -hmm. we're just vying. I had another film in this spot up until a couple hours ago. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, last time I checked, it was still that. <laughs> yeah, and so I've been fighting internally with my choice here. Um, this is not easy. If you're going to be on Satanist, Satanist on Cinema, because uh, I know the title for sure, uh, then you know it's good. It's got to be good. We only mm -hmm. choose the best. So. Yeah, because we got an excellent taste. <laughs> Duh. I have to lead that up before we get to your number one. <laughs> hey, hey, I, ooh, I know where you live, motherfucker. <laughs> All right, so let's, uh, let's do your number four. What's your number four? All right, number four, my personal introduction to Mr. Dario Argento, mm. Suspiria. Oh, my God. The first in the so good. Oh my god, it's so good. And see, I got to watch it live two years ago, and that was fucking amazing. What does that mean? You got to watch it live. Um, so uh, Goblin did the soundtrack, um, right. as they did with a lot of Argento's films, um, and they played it live. So we got to sit in the concert hall and watch oh the band gosh. play the soundtrack to Suspiria, and then they. Did a full concert afterwards. Oh, that's badass. I mean, if you know who Goblin is, it really wasn't that badass, but it was fucking awesome. Nope, that's cool as shit, man. That yeah, it cool was uh, shit. I had to pretty much drag my wife kicking and screaming to go, and then she ended up having a lot of fun. But yeah, fuck, this is a good movie. Oh, if man. you've never seen it, you desperately need to see it. It will open your eyes to a whole new genre of films. Like personally, my I bleed Jalo. Mm -hmm. because of this film and his other movies. Like, I, I fucking love it. Anyways, reason why I find this satanic is yeah, a couple of reasons. One, it's really heavy on witchcraft, and I mean, that's just kind of obvious. Like, if there's a, a an occult or heavy magical tone... All of them witches. It goes. Um, but not only that, the main protagonist, I mean, she's just an utter badass who finds herself at the end and ends up destroying one of the most powerful covens of witches. Mm -hmm. And it's just... It's fucking amazing. Like the, that's I pretty much told you the entire story, uh, yeah. because admittedly the uh, Argento Suspiri, it's mostly just music. It's it's scene. It's atmosphere, and it will fucking give you atmosphere. It's so um, good. 
like this is like a perfect dissertation on the physics of light and colors. Mm -hmm. Like seriously, I'm just talking about it. I'm getting goosebumps. Like that's how perfect of a film this is. Yeah. Um, so watch it. Okay. So it's, again, you mentioned Dario Argento. Uh, it was released in 1977. It brought in 1.43 billion in mm. Italy alone. Yeah. With a B billion. Yeah. I mean, it, it was amazing. Uh, 7.4 on, out of 10 on IMDb, which is a fucking hate crime. Yeah. 93% certified fresh with an 83% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. So if you don't love this movie, you're a Nazi. Yes. It's just And there things. are... I'm sorry. It's, I mean, there's Germans in this. See? It's got everything. <laughs> if you're a Nazi, you should even love it. <laughs> yeah. No, this is a great great film and the soundtrack helps this film be a weird art cinema piece and mm -hmm. turns it into a really entertaining piece um, as well I love this film it, it's yeah. one that I haven't seen in probably like five to six years but every time I put it in I am trapped into mm -hmm. the eyes to TV like uh, uh, a clockwork orange and listening to Beethoven too, Immortal Beloved um, and just loving it. It's, it's yeah. so good. I even, it's... I like the, I don't know if I would have liked the remake if this hadn't preceded it mm -hmm. as much. I mean, cause it still has some really cool yeah. elements in it, but I yeah, think I, I love the remake. It leans I, on it, yeah. It's, it was, it was just a, it was a different outlook yeah. on the, um, Fuck, of course, I forgot to write down my notes of what this is based off of, but it's uh, Suspiria de Fonda or some shit like that, but it's it's a, a collection of poetry. And the, the um, what was it, 2018 version? Uh, follows some of it a yeah. little bit more. It's a lot more heavy into the witchcraft and all that, but yeah, yeah no, it's... Yeah. I You definitely had to have this before in order to make that what it was. Yeah. No, it was great. And, and what I love that this did with light and color and suspense, uh, that did with fashion and mm -hmm. performance. And Well, that's that's a funny thing. Like, so many people bitched about 2018 because of the fact that it was so bleak and so quiet compared to this. And it's like, yeah, but you can't do a, a remake of it. There's no way you can do it and have it not be campy or stupid, mm -hmm. which... I mean, campy and stupid is always fun, but not with something serious like this. Yeah. Yeah, there's so no I, tongue I, in any cheek here. <laughs> yeah, they, they did it perfectly. Yeah. I think. Um, all right. I think that's a great one. Uh, that was your number four. Let's see what my number four is, people. Any guesses? I got to look because I don't know. So my number four matches I'll, up with uh, one of yours. I think number three. Yes. Yes, my number three. <laughs> so this is the on the nose, of course. It just... And, God... I did not want to put this on my list. Yeah, I know. I, I didn't either. I did not want to. So I, I wanted I wanted Frank, original Frankenstein, mm -hmm. but it the film does not do what the novel does, and so mm -hmm. it wouldn't be an honest film choice. Mm -hmm. And then I thought Ex Machina, and I thought, but Ex Machina is not as good as this, which has the same themes, but this has much more that is so satanic. It's just like all over your face. Yeah, definitely, definitely all and over so your face. And so you have to have it on the list, even though it's so obvious. So anyway, yeah. um, Blade Runner, directed by Ridley Scott, released in 1982, the first version. There's been like yeah, the first seven version. cuts. There's three. There's three different edits? There's I thought there was more cuts. Than No, there's three. Okay. Um, unless you want to count television, um, so yeah, then it yeah. then it would be yeah. four. But Ridley Scott kept going back and forth between director's mm -hmm. cut, definitive director's cut. Um, it, I, I have a 4K version of this that is amazing. It is so amazing to watch. I just love it so much. Uh, anyway, uh, it, budget of 30 million. It brought in 32.9 million, which isn't far off from the sequel that was released just recently as well. It didn't bring in what people. I still haven't it seen to. it. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, oh, I got to come I over when this too. is over and we can we can watch it. Yeah, I mean when the virus is over. <laughs> I mean, I'll shit. come over right now. You, you guys are just like us. You stay at home and avoid it's people. It's, it's safe. Uh, we'll just tunnel under the city. <laughs> we'll get yes. together that way. Um, it got an eight point one on IMDb, 
It's 90% certified fresh with a 91% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. It stars Harrison Ford, Rutger Hauer, and Sean Young. Perfect, perfect Art Deco film, if there ever could be, blended brilliantly with dystopian futures, which if you are a sci-fi fan, that is your bread and fucking butter. Uh, yeah. <laughs> nicely, Story. nicely illustrated. Um, it's Harrison Ford. It's Han fucking Solo. How do you, it's Indiana Jones. It's the greatest <laughs> actor of his era doing what he does best. And that is action. He is this, so this, good. this entire cast is fucking perfect. Yeah. Like it's an all-star cast for the era. Mm -hmm. But even beyond music. that, the music, mm -hmm. spectacular, the setting, spectacular, the storyline is we're talking about man creating life becoming god and then not f being able to figure out what life actually is anymore because yeah. these creatures they create are somehow more than mm -hmm. creations and it's brilliant in the poetry of the desire to create the thing that will inevitably destroy you and of mm -hmm. course in this film they don't end up that way but um that's why they shipped them off to a different colony yeah. so that they could be used as slaves. And it brings up the idea of humanity, slavery, what it means to be human. And that alone is brilliant as well. I mean, there's so much that is inherently satanic in this film that, that there nothing, maybe the noodles aren't, I don't know, but even no, those are pretty no. satanic. No, fucking noodles are pretty goddamn <laughs> satanic in my book. Yeah. <laughs> I can weave them into a pentagram. Say that, or just put them on my goddamn face. It's just so good. It, it's such it a is. good film. It it's not a fast film, so make sure yeah, it's a fucking story builder. Oh yeah. my god, how often? <laughs> I, god, I fucking hate it when people say slow burn. It's like no, you're just stupid. <laughs> yeah. Called character yeah. building. It's called atmosphere. All I'm saying is, story. don't start it right at midnight and expect to get through it all. No, but especially if you're going with the definitive cut. Yeah. Yeah, yep. no. <laughs> yep. um, and this is one of those films where not all future cuts were good. Like, there, mm -hmm. there was some cuts. I think the, Ridley's um, final cut, uh, it's the version I have. I enjoy that the most. But yeah, there's supposed absolutely. to be a cut that I hadn't seen that w put in so much. It was everything in the kitchen sink that it was just laborious to sit through. It didn't really benefit from it. Mm -hmm. And then they ended up doing the Ridley cut after. Yeah. So. It's sort of like the cabal cut of Nightbreed. Yeah. Just not not made up of dailies, which that shit, man, you really have that. to love. I thought that was great. The Cabal cut? Yeah. No, I, I loved it too. But like, if you're not somebody that understands what you're going into, right. like, and especially if you never watched Nightbreed before, right, right, right. you're just going to be like, what the fuck? Why did the, why did the camera change? Why is it all great? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was great. I don't want to get on the Clive Barker bent now because I didn't even put in Hellraiser. <laughs> I... Dude, it was honestly, it was a toss up between Blade Runner and Nightbreed. And I couldn't quite argue with myself that mm -hmm. Nightbreed was more satanic than Blade Runner. So, I, yeah, that's, that's a good choice. I, I don't think I could have. Yeah. Um, it's, I mean, it's I guess tough it because cause it's got um, um, David Cronenberg in it. So, I mean, that's something, right? Yeah. Meh. yeah. Did you hear that? Yeah, I think Clive Barker's breaking in for uh, fucking Nightbreed. Yeah, it's not satanic. Yeah, um, <laughs> Pinhead's just like morphing into my room just now. Uh, no, I mean, so do we choose films that are just like oozing satanic, or we choose less on the nose that are poised with brilliancy in and of themselves that is tangentially related to Satanism and thereby making a, a more interesting experience? You know, like how do you cut these lists? And that's something that we struggled with, but this one was just, you couldn't, you couldn't not keep it on here. So we both oh, yeah. had it on our list. Yeah, definitely. What is your, well, number... quick one, one thing oh. I would like to say yeah. is if you guys have watched the movie, you like the movie, definitely need to read, um, God damn it. What's his name? Uh, Philip K. Dick's, uh, do Android stream of electric sheep. It's so much bleaker than the movie. It's, and it's great. It's a quick read. Check it out. All right. There it is, people. Read it. There it read is. It. Um, 
We're going to go over the, your guys' suggestions, too, uh, that I asked for, which I didn't grab imagery for, but I think it's interesting that you guys had completely different perspectives than we did. Um, what is your... I guess we're going to have to skip your number three, because this was your number three. So Yeah, so let's just go to your two? number three. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes much more sense. Yeah. What is my number three? Here we go. This also is pretty on the nose, but I had to have it because... It doesn't matter. That's too on the nose. it so much Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory this is directed by uh, Mel Stewart 1971 had a budget of 2.9 million box office of 4.5 million it has a 7.8 out of 10 on IMDb 91% fresh and 87% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes it stars Gene Wilder Jack Albertson and Peter Ostrom it is the absolute probably best personification of a total environment you'll ever see in anything ever you can Eat the grass, and the schnozberries taste like schnozberries. They were licking dicks. Black cat! I didn't have black cat on mine. I I almost I almost <laughs> put black cat as my number five. Um, uh, okay. But yeah. So yeah, it was like, uh, do I go with something? Because the reason why I didn't choose black cat, to be honest, was because we've done it. Yeah. Um, we did that but then we did Blade Runner. Yeah. And that was on here too. But whatever. Well, the problem I have with Black Cat is that it's – actually, I don't have any problem. It's a brilliant film. It's it's totally satanic. I don't know why it's on my list. I didn't think of it. That's why it's not on my list. But it's a great satanic film. Um, these are living organisms, these lists. They will change and adapt with time until the point where we have to ship them off to another planet to, or moon to be slaves, and then they come back and try to kill us because it happens. Okay, so Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, it – it teaches you about lesser magic. It teaches you about total environments. It teaches you about um, uh, really hilarious performances by an amazing actor, Gene Wilder. Um, the music is fun and great. The Oompa Loompas are strange and beautiful. And it's chock full of morals that even as Satanists are pertinent to our nine satanic statements. Um, Absolutely. Now, this isn't a breakdown, so we're not going to get into all that. But just to say, it is totally satanic in every possible way. It's brilliant. Yeah. I love it. Mm. Yeah. And if anybody wants to argue it, you're wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. So that's. I don't really have anything else to say about it. I mean, there's. Who hasn't seen yeah, it? Yeah. You, you must have seen it by it. now, so you know. Yeah. Uh, every one of the songs, I could jump up and down and, and sing with you, dancing around the room. Uh, I absolutely adore this film. It's so mm. much fun. It's just wonderful. It's perfect. Yeah. The Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, on the other that hand. Was oh, that was <laughs> not, awful. Not I wanted to like it. I did too. I really did too. So goddamn much. There it's are like, lines that I like. <laughs> uh, A lot of good yeah. lines. But other than that, it's not really that good. Um, anyway, this one is brilliant. What is your number dos? Numero dos. Well, ironically enough, Adam, our number twos are the same. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Let me throw it up. This Fucking is it. Rocky Horror Picture mm. Show. Mm. Let's do the God. time warp again. You put your hands on your hips. Bring your knees inside. Okay. Anyway. See, my reasoning, the only reasoning I needed yeah. is... What I don't like is bad, or what I don't like is evil, what I like is good. So yeah. fuck you, I love this movie. Yeah, That's how it's satanic. This... I mean, there's also a bunch of other reasons, but it's just, it, you can't help but just completely envelop yourself in the world. Mm -hmm. Like, the entire time this is going, it's just so fucking good. Yeah. Okay, so this is directed by Jim Sharman, released 1975, budget of 1.4 million, box office of 140.2 million. Whew. Made it back in And it Spain. still plays in theaters. It still plays with a live audience in theaters. It's fantastic. I saw it once for my first time last year. Oh, last did you go to the, the year Broadway? Last. No, I went to the one over the tower. Oh, well, that's what I meant. Oh, so yeah. It had the actual shadow cast and everything? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fuck, and there's And it still... had Brad. Oh, yeah, I forgot Andy you Chow went to that one. Yeah. Damn it. I knew that. Um, anyway, Barry Bostwick, Susan Sarandon, Tim Curry. Tim Curry. I mean, if, if there's a, an actor that oozes pseudo, uh, I mean, uh, uh, de facto Satanism, it is he. Yeah. I didn't have legend in this either, and that's pretty badass, too. That's true. That one's wicked obvious. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, for the demon imagery for sure. Um, it has a 7.4 out of 10 on IMDb, 79% fresh, uh, certified fresh, and 85% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. Don't dream it, be it. There is no more satanic statement than that. Don't mm -hmm. dream it, be it. It doesn't matter what other people think. You do not deny who you are at the core of your being. This is satanic witchery 101, and it is just Absolutely. thrown in your face. And it is just, you will accept me or you won't, but that's on you, you bigoted fucker. Enjoy life. Yep. It ain't all that bad, is it, Brad? <laughs> <laughs> it's just so good. There's so many great lines, great music. I have this on in my playlist at all times, always and mm -hmm. forever. I just yeah, no, same time. here. So same good. here. Oh god damn it! So satanic. Although I do try to skip over the original cut of uh, sort of Damocles because mm -hmm. God, that's not not that good. I'm glad they went the direction they did with that. Yeah. yeah. No, I want to sing the goddamn song. I know. I I <laughs> it was a uh, it was everything. a toss up on uh, actually, you know, getting off camera like standing off to the oh, side yeah. and then coming in doing yes! uh, a song but uh <laughs> i figured uh my camera probably couldn't pick up all of the awesomeness so yeah I, I wouldn't dance and sing to it oh man it's just so good i love it so much um great number two we both had to have it but that's not number it, one that's not it, number it was one. it was an obvious one but yeah. well and actually that's the funny thing i didn't think it was an obvious one but that was like the first thing i thought of um, besides my number one, because mm -hmm. number one, it, that always pops in my head over everything, but yeah, I mean, yeah. I, all of my nine cents podcast is let in with a line from the show. I mean, it's, it's everything that I love about being human, you know, just owning who you are and damn everyone else. The message is fantastic. The music is fantastic. The set piece, that's a great castle. Mm -hmm. I mean, and just the outfits, the fashion is so good. Even meatloaf, they made me like meatloaf. I know that's that's which yeah, that uh, and uh, the pick of destiny. It's the only times I've ever gave a shit about him. Yeah, <laughs> that's a trick, man. That's a trip. Uh, okay, anyway, I loved watching this with you at that one theater. Oh my god, that where was we so broke much fun. DA I, into it. <laughs> I, I only remember a little bit, and I got videos. If I would have thought about it, I should have totally sent you the videos so that could be playing right now. Yeah, of all yeah. of us drunk as shit and Dude, singing we and dancing. Fucked. <laughs> oh, but it was, was a good, a good time. time really really good time i was all sweaty yeah. and dancing they were all and singing loved yeah. it so much anyway this is so. a brilliant satanic film we can gush about it all night um mm -hmm. let's do your number one all right actually no my no num yours is different so let's okay. do mine because it's expected and then let's leave okay let's end with yours which is the unexpected i think that's a good idea all right my number one is a film that i've spoken to in every podcast I have ever done, it is at the core of my being one of my favorite films of all time. It is, now you're seeing it, Rosemary's Baby. Rosemary's yeah. Baby is a brilliant, timeless classic about a woman terrified this cult of Satan worshipers are going to steal and murder her baby. And in reality, they want to love it and take it and be it, you know, have it grow into uh, the Prince of Darkness, as it were, Adrian. Um, this is a brilliant, just a terrifying film. Mm -hmm. The cinematography, the music. All right, let me give you a quick uh, rundown of uh, details here. Directed by uh, the incomparable Roman Polanski, released 1968, budget of 2.3 million, box office brought in 33.4 million. It has an 8.0 out of 10 uh, on IMDb, 96% certified fresh with 87% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. Starring Mia Farrow, John Castavetz, Ruth Gordon, Sidney Blackmer. This is a great satanic film from Fuck beginning yeah. to end. The story, it's satanic. <laughs> uh, it's about devils bringing Satan into the world and impregnating a woman mm -hmm. to then raise their son as the Prince of Darkness. I mean, th that is as myth mythologically satanic as you possibly can get. Absolutely. Um, it's just, and it's a thriller. Like, this pregnant woman is paranoid, but it's real. <laughs> this is real. This is really happening. <laughs> it's so good. So goddamn good. Ugh. Okay, so um, did I miss anything about this being super satanic that you wanted to bring up? No, not, not really. I mean, it's just, I, it oozes it from scene 
like from the first scene to the very closing scene. And that closing scene is so fucking powerful because the whole time you think, oh, my God, they're going to murder her. They're going to take the baby. It's going to be evil. And no, they're just like hanging out, watching a kid. And they're happy. They're like, cool. Here's your kid. It's a party. Take care of him. We're just here and we're happy. There's so much that is so good about this. I, I literally use like four tracks from the soundtrack in my satanic rituals. And That's makes how good sense. it is. Um, it's one of those things where if, if I just want to read a book or if I just want to sort of zone out and do computer work, I can turn on the soundtrack and it just eases me through my day. It is so brilliant. And it just immediately start seeing the imagery of the film mm-hmm. in your eyes as soon as you start hearing musical cues and it's just brilliant i just love it so much um so yeah that's that was my number one ninth gate is good jordan dunn i've spoken to that uh before it's a fun one it's a good one not number one material not for me but it's good i would i would probably put it in my top 15 for sure but not my top five anyway yeah this this is a bit of a rattlesnake All right, here this one <sighs> me Get these fuckers on. Okay. Anybody that wants to argue, I will punch in your fucking face. (laughs) Ernest fucking scared stupid. Mm -hmm. One of the most satanic films in my opinion. (laughs) One, Ernest P. Wuerl, fully realized human being. That is what we all want to be. Yes, he's stupid, but he's fucking happy. He knows what he wants in life. He gets everything he wants in life. And fucking... He, total environment. He builds a goddamn treehouse. Granted, it's on a cursed tree that he performs the ritual, you know, to call forth the troll. It's, you know, he kind of fucks up. You know, mm-hmm. yay, I call thee for Trantor. Probably not the best idea because, of course, then Trantor comes forth and kills the kids. Yeah, yeah. And just fucking all around. It's a fun movie. It's creepy as shit. Like, there's moments of absolute horror, and, I mean, the magic, there's so much magic involved. Wasn't this the end of his career as Ernest? No, absolutely not. Uh, This was the end of his deal with Disney. Um, Ah. Well, uh, God, what was it? Because it wasn't Disney, it was uh, Viacom or something like that. Whatever one of their uh, subsidiaries were. Mm -hmm. Um, He had a four-picture deal. And this did not do well. Everybody's like, oh, this is fucking stupid. This is worst Ernest yet. So that's when Disney was like, nah, you're good. So everything else that they produced after this, it was all independently released yeah. and straight to video. I remember him from when I was a kid. I mean, we, we would always watch Ernest goes to camp and just have a good time. Like, it, I can't go wrong with Ernest movies. Um, it was directed by John R. Cherry the third. He goes by John Cherry. Uh, released 1991. Uh, it brought in 14.1 million, and it has a 5.1 out of 10 on IMDb. It is 17 percent rotten, with a 50 percent audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. It stars Ridiculous. Jim Varney, Eartha Kitt, Austin Nagler, and whoever else. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not into this at all. Dude, I, I seriously, I love this movie. Uh, Nobody can tell me otherwise that this is a bad movie. It's just, it's so perfect and it's probably just you know because i saw it when i was what, what, fucking seven eight whatever um it just it, it's always been a really powerful film for me yeah. uh of course you got the message of you know friends stay together and hoorah and blah 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 but god it's just it's a legit horror movie like the the effects in this because i mean of course this is 91 this is before really anything other than maybe hiding wires if you're lucky like, everything's practical. Mm-hmm. Fucking Trantor's scary as shit, especially after his transformation. He starts growing the giant fingers out of his head and the giant horns and shit. And the battle scene at the end, where all his children are raised, fuck, creepy as shit. All right, well, I'm going to have to watch it again and <laughs> see if I can just... Uh, I should do it now, actually, specifically. You will love it. You can get it for like three dollars. Well, you don't have primes. Never mind. I'm sure you can find it somewhere for like two or three dollars. Yeah. And you should totally watch it. Yeah, YouTube lot of... movies too, so I can probably check there. Yeah, I think it's on. It probably is. All right. Um, John says Zardoz is satanic. Anyone who disagrees with him does not understand. Okay. I don't understand. 
<laughs> but that's okay. I don't have to. Um, the thing about film is it's subjective. The thing about <laughs> what is or is not satanic is absolutely subjective. It all so. depends on what... what I was going to say... What strokes you or something, but um, there was like a saying, but it just left me right when I started saying <laughs> it. And so now I have to explain that so I don't look like I have Tourette's or something and I'm stuttering. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Um, Metropolis is great. Metropolis is five. great. Not my no, I, no, definitely not top five. Um, there is a, there's a lot of films. Okay, so let's, let's go over what you guys told me were your favorites. Uh, your number one I asked for. Nothing more, just your top satanic film and i asked why but not everyone gave me why but that's okay um elijah i'm gonna call out you you said mandy it would be too on the nose to pick blade runner i mean mandy's fun dude goes on a mission uh after pseudos that were hired by a hippie after they destroy his total environment and it's corny and stylized and fun not quite slapstick it is a psychedelic romp it is a through metal awesome is what it yeah. is it's like a fully realized uh heavy metal story if you guys Absolutely. remember the magazine heavy metal um it's great it's uh mandy's fantastic i don't i wouldn't see it as overtly satanic personally but I love, I've, I've seen it in various states of consciousness and I absolutely love it every time. Um, it's, it's a brilliant film. It's a little yeah, it more, uh, again, it's, it's like heavy metal, you know? I mean, that's, I don't know how else to say it. Um, yeah, no, that's actually, I mean, if anybody knows what heavy metal is, yeah, that's, that's like a perfect description of it. Yeah. But in a, in a good way. I'm not saying that derogatory. Uh, Mantis says, Death Wish. Lex Talionis on screen. You Ugh. clearly didn't catch our last show. <laughs> oh, man. That movie was so rough. That wouldn't even make it in my top, like... No. no I don't know. It wouldn't no. be in a top list. Not at all. If I, I could I count how many it. movies I've seen in my entire life, it still would not make that list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was funny, but not... It wasn't supposed to be funny. Yeah. Uh, Behemoth says, Antrim is Satanism. I'm going to have to watch that. You've mentioned it a number of times to me. Yeah, I don't know if I've seen that. I'm going to check it. Uh, Lanny says, The Crow. It has all the dark imagery, a bit of blasphemy, and most importantly, an anti-hero vigilante who works in the shadows to deliver personal justice to the people who blatantly and purposely wronged him and his fiance. Yeah. Two thumbs up. I love Fucking me love the, crow. the Crow. Again, we talked about this before, too. 80s or uh, 90s films mm -hmm. with amazing soundtracks. Like, The Crow yeah. is just... Yeah, that was fucking perfect. It came perfect. out at that perfect time, too. It was just all gothic love in popular culture. And it, it's just a brilliant film. Brandon Lee was amazing. I love that film. It's great. Yep. I, again, would not... I would not categorize it as satanic. I can recognize satanic themes in it, just like I can with Mandy. But for mm -hmm. me, it wouldn't be on my list. I like it. I like. I don't know. It's good. Uh, Jared yeah. says idiocracy. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I Just love that film. Stupidity. Um, absolutely. Yeah. No. I. <laughs> if it if, weren't if, so real. <laughs> if we were going by the satanic sins, yeah, that is definitely, definitely a satanic film. Mm -hmm. And, you know. It's. I'm totally voting for President Command Show next year or this next coming term because we've already had the worst. Let's let's at least get somebody in there that can fucking flex and give us monster trucks. <laughs> nice. Uh, have a good night, Mandy. Um. Uh, you said. Wait, where's the Hellraiser? Leo says Hellraiser. Yeah, I love Hellraiser. Um. See, I would honestly go with most Clive Barker, except for um. Uh, God damn it! What is it? The Rex one. Oh, Rawhead Rex? Rawhead Rex. Oh, God. Oh. I love the Books of Blood. Right, so fuck you. <laughs> no, no, no. no, no. I'm talking movie. Oh, the film. Yeah, the yeah, movie. yeah. Have you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I love right. Clive Barker just as much as the next guy. <laughs> but that movie, mm -hmm. who? <laughs> uh, we've got another upvote by Sean for Mandy. Uh, he thinks the character Red does a good job of smashing in the cheek those who have wronged him. He does a bit more than that, but you're absolutely right. Just a little bit more. Yeah, Melinda says, uh, Hammer Horror Film fan of, she is, uh, she thinks the Satanic Rites of Dracula. And then she follows that up with, um... oh, wait. 
she oh there it is lords of salem sorry uh man i have not been able to make it through lords of salem really i okay. i fall asleep every time i love it yeah, okay I, I don't know why it's just like sherry moon it's starts talking at the beginning and i just fall asleep <laughs> she needs to have a few meals <laughs> just yeah i don't want to i don't want to shame anyone for their size or anything but i feel like she could she could go for a couple happy meals and be all right mm. um she's sleeping. yeah well yeah Dr. Fives. I didn't even have Dr. Fives on mine. I, Dog I it almost put it on there, but again, I was trying to avoid movies that we've done before. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I, it, it's, the thing is, is when I think of Satanism, I definitely think of humor. Mm-hmm. Like that's, that's right up there with the evil aesthetics for mm-hmm. me, you know? And so I definitely, I, I like that film now. It took me a little bit to, to get into it personally the first time i saw it i didn't like it very much uh, and then watching it again I, i'm like a little bit okay mask of red death is another that i've seen a number of times and i'm just like yeah okay. that that was a hard one not to put on here because i really love that movie yeah. uh, the fly drop cloth back there is a good candidate <laughs> brendel fly yeah um because yes that is cronenberg yeah. the fly you can't see because it's like this big but yeah it's not the original fly it's cronenberg so do you want to bring up your honorable mentions? All right. So honorable mentions. Uh, I'll start with my number two. And there's no particular order. This is just the way I wrote them down. Um, Extraordinary. It's just fucking funny. I thought it was hilarious. Um, a lot of the ritual shit's actually really cool, um, especially when he starts singing with his keyboard and, you know, talking about, ole, 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 mm-hmm. Satan, Satan. It's like, fuck, why don't I incorporate that into ritual? Yeah. It's just, it's funny as shit. <laughs> and then uh, my other one, it definitely um, is, you know, because of ritual and the importance of ritual would be the short film from 2007 called The Tiffany Problem. It's a bunch of grown ass men wanting to go trick or treating, and uh, he ends up killing his wife so that he can. Whoa! Because you don't She's break the problem. Tr- she is the problem. He, uh, oh, wow. he went trick-or-treating, much to her chagrin, and he brought her back candy and slipped a razor blade in there, and that's how she died. Oof, that's where it all yeah. came from. That way, that's that's where it all came from. <laughs> um, so there's – Ashworth brings up an interesting title, The Witch. Um, I, I almost – But here's yeah. the deal. When, when selecting a film that's going to be like your number one or a really high level satanic film, are you just going with the presence of a devil, of a Satan? Or do you need more than that? The entire theme of The Witch was about the breakdown of the family unit. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's in isolation. I mean, that's, that's really how I interpret that film. I don't see anything overtly satanic at all about that film outside of Puritan idea of the devil through imagery the See, end I, I, if we were going to do like a witch list that's on my witch list for sure oh yeah definitely but See, not saying i i can understand the end like the very end of the movie being satanic where totally she finally gives in to her desires and just you know becomes what she actually is inside yeah but he was doing the, like... the rest of the movie is her trying to deny what she is that's not yeah, fucking satanic. or embrace it to scare her kids uh, you know, not believing that that's what she is, or her mm-hmm. her family, her sisters, uh, her sister yeah. and brother, not kids. But um, yeah, it's just not. Yeah, that that's why I didn't make not, my list. It's tough. I I do love that film though. Like I watch yeah. it pretty yeah. frequently. I get really uncomfortable in that scene down by the river where the the brother is at that pubescent age of of yeah. recognizing the female form, and it just has to be his sister because she's the only one there. That's an uncomfortable watch for me because. Oh, yeah. As a pervert, I know what's going on in his mind. And I'm like, oh, that's your sister, dude. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. And it, like back then, that wasn't so strange even to like bed in families. I mean, it was taboo and everything, but it, you're out in the middle of nowhere. Who else are you going to experiment with? It yeah. happened. So <clears throat> it was uncomfortable. I didn't, I didn't like that scene particularly, but I appreciate the bravery of keeping it in because it does speak to that boy's status when he then is – enchanted with the incredibly sexy gold crone that looks like a beautiful witch yeah so it, yeah I, I a total it. witch film for me like nothing less but it's brilliant i love it so much and the music 
I mean, they stole the music, but it's still great. It's like it doesn't matter. They used it well. Yeah, that's true. A lot of places, like the soundtrack of Willow, you will find in every action film after Willow. It's crazy. Um, but anyway, okay, I'll have to watch the Tiffany Problem. I've never seen it. Yeah, um, it's it's pretty short and it's yeah. free. Like it's it's funny. I was I was really fighting with this one, uh, freaks. <laughs> I wanted to include it. I think it is so satanic and everything, but I wanted to, I just, I, I felt more emotionally connected with Immortal Beloved than with Freaks. Um, yeah, no, and they I... they were for me neck and neck. I can appreciate that 100%. Yeah. Freaks is great, though. You got it. It is. It's so goddamn good. And you gotta watch good. it a couple times, too, because you can watch it and just sort of enjoy it, um, but I want to live there. Like, I want to, mm. like shake these people's hands if they have hands <laughs> rub their cones like I, I just i love this these people these are mm -hmm. these are great human beings that are just exploring life and god damn it google gobble i am one of you one of you <laughs> one of us so good well it's one of us because it's them saying you want you can be one of us we accept you but yes i'm, I'm so fucking good so, so fucking good yeah. <laughs> it's good uh thank you guys for throwing in yours uh gary says rope by hitchcock I haven't seen that. Anything Hitchcock. I, I haven't seen God, that. that man is. I mean, it's he's good. I don't know. I don't know about. I don't know about. Well, that. I mean, I'm not saying like overtly satanic. I'm just saying everything that man ever did was just amazing. I, I tell you what, I still go back and watch Alfred Hitchcock Presents. Mm -hmm. Like, I know there's people that are like, they're diehard Outer Limits people, they're diehard Twilight Zone people, um, they're diehard. <laughs> uh, there was a Nightmare on Elm Street Freddy's. series of. Freddy's series. It was called. Um, was it just Isn't called like Nightmare? Freddy's Dreams. Freddy's Nightmare. That's what it is. Freddy's Nightmare. There Freddy's we Nightmare. go. Um, <laughs> there was a Friday the Thirteenth so one as well. Yeah, there's called Friday the Thirteenth, right? The, the series or something like that, mm -hmm. um, which was fun. Uh, the amazing stories. So my point is, anthology series that people just latch on to. Alfred Hitchcock presents his mind. I was after it ended, but. I, it's just this – again, I'm a big fan of time capsules, and it is a total time capsule for me. Absolutely. And I just – I love going back to it. It's so wonderful. It's yeah, so no, good. I, that's what I grew up watching was that shit, and then my uncle had uh, this Vincent Price collection on VHS. Mm -hmm. So it would be like as soon as that shit's over, I'd throw in one of those tapes, go to bed, and yeah, beautiful shit. Yeah. Now I'm thinking about uh, Freddy Krueger. So do you remember the Freddy Hotline? You could call Freddy and he would talk mm -hmm. to you on the phone. So no, it, but... it cost money back then when you called numbers, they cost money. Um, it was like one ninety nine for the first minute, two ninety nine every minute after, or something like that. Uh, but I didn't want to do it at my house because then my parents would know that I did it. So I did it at my buddy's house, <laughs> and I was listening to Freddy as he was talking to me. It was great, fucking Freddy. And that's when Nightmare on Elm Street two was the most recent. Mm -hmm. Which I never even saw as gay until the goddamn documentary. I, I okay. <laughs> that yeah, was just same the era. Thing. That was yeah. I never thought about it until somebody said, "Yeah, that's one of the most gay films ever made." I'm like, I've seen some shit, man. That's not one of the gayest films ever made. It was so good. And then you watch it with that in mind, and it's like, yeah, this yeah, no, is totally a gay. film about <laughs> being in a closet, being in the closet. Holy not shit! Gay. Not not in a negative way. Just it is totally overly gay. No, of course. There's nothing wrong and with it that. Look a lot at of people too. So hey, good on them. Nightbreed's one of the gayest movies ever made. Uh, what? Uh, yeah, it's all about coming out and finding your tribe. Ask yeah, but you Mr. can Clyde extrapolate Park. that to anything. No no no, 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 no. That's from the author. What does Clyde that, Barker know? Yeah. What does he know about homosexuality? About his own story <laughs> about yeah. Well, I was gonna say his own writings, but you're right about that too. Um, all right, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. Fine. Whatever. I accept it. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, that's going to do it for this episode. We, we've sort of just been bantering here randomly. Uh, we appreciate you guys sitting in here. Let us know in the comments below if you totally disagree with us on one or if you weren't able to chat with us in live chat, what is your favorite satanic film? And yeah, why? let us know how much you love Ernest Scared Stupid. Yeah, there's going to be like this huge resurgence of fans <laughs> over <laughs> Ernest Scared Stupid. I was like, I forgot about that show. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you everyone so much for tuning in. If you enjoy these, it's in podcast form too. If you can't catch the live show or you just don't want to look at our pretty faces, I understand. Um, I don't. <laughs> but uh, just 
go wherever you get podcasts and search for Evan Campbell. You'll get it. Um, you can always uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, sign up to the email list to find out what we're going to be talking about next, what film or topic we're going to be covering. Thank you all again so much. And until next time, hell Satan. Hail Jim Barney. I think our outro video should be that we don't have an outro video and we just discuss not having an outro video. I, I think you're onto something. That would actually be perfect. I mean, it just makes more sense, I think. And then we could talk over it like we do right now. Yeah. That's a, that's a good yeah. idea. So should I just take this clip and then put it in as the audio for next time? And then we'll <laughs> just talk over us talking over us talking over ourselves? That is genius. You just get lost. Yeah.